He had the nerve to like say no on decision day, and then he started crying. I'm like, I said I should be the one crying. So did he explain like why? He wanted me to be more nurturing. Hey guys, and welcome to Little Papa. You know what time it is. My voice is getting stronger, baby. Listen, we're talking to you guys about uh, Kirsten and Shaq, but we're dealing with uh, Kirsten. Um, I don't think Kirsten is used to being rejected. I really don't. I don't think she puts... First of all, I don't think she puts herself out there enough to be able to do that. And number two, I thought, I think she just definitely doesn't deal very well with rejection. Um, and that could be deeper rooted issues as well. And not in, in a bad way, um, just in, the, in a sense of just a pathology as to why she may be very adverse to rejection. Humanly, we all don't like rejection. But when we have a very adverse reaction to it, uh, sometimes that can indicate something. Um, but uh, yeah, let's discuss a little bit more of that on this review and breakdown. Uh, make sure you guys like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the uploads. And for those of you who are returnees, you already know what the motto is. You got the minerals, you got the minerals. Stay hydrated. All right, let's get into this. Um, let's play a bit more of the clip and let's have a little bit more of a conversation. And he felt like he was alone in this marriage and that I wasn't there for him, and I'm just like, okay. With some of the things that he... Now, what's really interesting about Kirsten is we saw from the beginning of the season how strong uh, the walls were, how high the towers were, how large the the the, the, the defense was. And um, we saw that also with Keisha when she spoke to her on the after party and how she started breaking down and started crying and she felt some type of way about the fact that obviously she was going uh, through it. We, we didn't know what per se, it was a lot of walls. And then we saw that when we had a conversation about the father figure and how she compared Shaq to her father, it was he was never going to be able to match up to her expectations because she had very large expectations. And then the whole house situation, there's just a lot of walls that were being put up, right? And a lot of uh, 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 incidents that were happening between Shaq and Kirsten, right? Nothing necessarily heinous or evil or bad. That was really, really bad. That was, you know, detrimental to anybody's health. But just bad enough that you know you think about it and you're like, I don't know if I want to be this, right? Now, we obviously the situation with Kirsten, the rejection piece is very, very strong. So, you know, she starts all the conversation by saying, <laughs> you know, he had the audacity to say no on on thingy day and then start crying, right? And now we made to that statement very lightly and say, hey, she's just playing around, she's just joking, you know, like she she means it in a light jest. And I would say, yeah, I hear you. I, I do think she meant it in the light, yes, but I also think there's some elements of truth behind it. She cannot believe he decided to reject her. How dare he? I, say, I personally feel like if she had stayed long enough, she would have been settling for him. I'm telling you, I think she would have been long enough. I think she might have been settling for him. I think she made peace with the fact that she wasn't attracted to him at first. She wasn't feeling him at first. And of course, yes, we always hear this woman say, oh, we can grow an attraction. Yeah, I hear you. But she told him, told the old boy from the very beginning, his bar-led weren't it, and that he's not attractive, right? Now, I'm not saying she didn't grow an attraction. I'm not saying she didn't grow an affection. I'm just saying that I feel like she kind of settled. And so that's why that comment make, makes it even more wilder. I'm not going to say wilder, but makes more sense. It's like he had the audacity to reject me when I was doing him a favor which is what we've been talking about on the channel for the last few weeks. Don't choose me if you think you're settling with me. Don't choose me if you think I'm ugly. It's just not necessary. There is somebody out there who thinks I'm fine. And I want that person who thinks I'm fine because I want to think they're fine too. You feel what I'm saying to you? Like women do it, do it and men do it too. They settle for people who they are not, they, they, who, who their heart doesn't want, but they're, they're, they they want to meet an objective. They want to be married. They want to have kids. They want to have the, the perfect um, imagery and life to portray to other people, to say, I done it. I won. I got to the top of the mountain. I did what you couldn't do, or I've done it, and I've joined you ladies as well. When in reality, you don't really want that person. In reality, you don't even like that person. In reality, that person isn't for you. In reality, that person doesn't do it for you. And I felt like that's where that comment was coming from with Kirsten, that she said, you know, the audacity for him to do that. Now, of course, part of her comment was also attached to him crying. Like, you know, you have the audacity to cry and then reject, but you're the one that rejected me. Shouldn't I be the one crying, which is what she said. Um, I think that also is another angle to look at it. And actually, that's the first one that she actually said verbatim. But I think there was something hidden, which is why I explained the hidden meaning behind that as well. Um, and it's interesting because the conversation between herself and her friend is quite 
insightful. Let's have a listen. He said, do you feel like you learned some things? Definitely. Like, it definitely made me be more prone to people's feelings and make for sure I am there emotionally and supporting them. And I'm. So she learned from the situation that, you know, she has to be more prone. I think what she means that is more, more aware of people's feelings um, and, and support them, which more than likely probably is something that she never really used to do in the past because she never really had a capacity to do so. Right. Um, I, Kirsten's given off the, 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 the feeling that she is a high achiever. And we spoke about this because of hyper independence. She's a hyper, she's a high achiever because of, because of having to be left alone to your own devices, having to fend for yourself, having to do things by yourself, being through trauma financially, being through trauma in your home, emotionally, mentally, um, you know, and we know obviously because we was looking at Kirsten like, yo, you spoke about your dad, you know, making peas and pro providing and paying all the bills and then put us, showed us a house, which was like, that don't even, that don't even look big enough to contain all of the kids that you told you said you had and siblings. So that's another question in itself. But, you know, I think w w with the situation with uh, Kirsten, I do feel when she was explaining uh, that, that little part there, I think she's come, a come aware that she needs to do better in that area, that um, her emotional, uh, 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 her emotional connection with people isn't as strong, right? I'm sure she rides for them. I'm sure she ride or die for them. But when it comes to emotional things, she isn't as attuned, which is why Shaq had an issue because seemingly he has far more uh, uh, in tune from uh, uh, emotional sense and required a lot more from her emotionally, which she couldn't necessarily give. And that's what we saw at the very beginning. That's why she was struggling to open up, struggling to, to, to say how she felt struggling to uh to give him grace and hence why she was saying about the whole laughter situation his laughter his humor is annoying or whatever all that kind of jazz um but i i do feel like as a course of the show went along she did start to fall for him i do i do feel like there's a part of her that was like starting to like him a lot um but i don't know if that's because she got used to being him around, used to him being around or whether she genuinely wanted him whether she genuinely liked him nobody exchanged the words i love you in eight weeks because they didn't I mean, eight weeks is long enough, man, when you spend every single day with each other to not say I love you. I mean, I don't, I'm just saying. Two months and you spend every day together and not say I love you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's doomed. You know what I mean? For me, it's doomed. It's, it's long for man. Um, let's play a little bit more of the clip and then uh, talk a little bit more. Being a nurturer. So, like, how do you feel, like, now, though, since it's over, do you feel like, okay, you just need time to, like, kind of focus on you because you have given so much to this process or... Right now, I must... So, I do feel with, with Kirsten, she she tried to give her... I think she, Kirsten gave her best. I think she gave all she could. I think she gave everything she could. She couldn't give anymore. There was nothing more she could have given, I, I believe. Um, so for me personally, I, I'm not mad at her in that respect as if that like, she didn't put any effort in. She put effort in. I just don't think she could have given what she needed. To, she could have given what Shaq actually needed. And both of that is positive and negative. One, the positive aspect is that in the sense of, I don't think she, even if she was healthy enough, she would be able to give it to him. Cause I think what he needed is more than what Kirsten could ever give or what any woman could give. And then I think also the other side is that, you know, she could have given more in the emotional sense. But when she grows to have a healthy balance in terms of giving um, herself emotionally, I think she'll make somebody very, very happy, right? Um, I don't think she's a lost cause or anything like that. But definitely, I felt like there was a rejection issue. And that's why that comment at the very beginning sparked a little idea in my head. Like, oh, no, I think she doesn't like, I don't think she, I don't think she was thinking he was gonna, she was going to get rejected. I don't think she felt like Shaq had a reason to reject her. But he did tell her from before I'm 50-50 and it depends on how the day goes. He told her this in the last episode and she was like, well, how can you, I do not know. I know already what I'm going to do. And I was like, well, if she really knows what she's going to do, that's probably going to be a, a yes, you know. Um, but he wasn't sure, right? Um, and he's been not sure for a few weeks. Now, some people might not like Shaq's way of going about things. Um, and I hear that as well. We we can talk about Shaq as well in another video, but I definitely felt like the rejection was a, a thing that Kirsten didn't like to see. And I think it definitely hurt her. Even at the end scene, she just looked hurt. I can't lie to you. She really did look hurt. She really looked like, you know what, this Negro played me. Like, she really felt like this boy literally had me looking like a whole fool on national television, which I get.
I'm not mad at her for that. But I think rejection was a big piece. And we can look at that from a child lens where her father figure, um, you know, I, I believe there's some emotional distances between herself and her father. And that's a form of uh, emotional abandonment that uh, an emotional um, pain that someone can feel and feel very bitter about um, and can end up punishing other men for it. Or, you know, in this instance, they can end up just pulling away from the individual person. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, listen, uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. Like, share, subscribe. Click on the bell button for notification of uploads. We appreciate you guys. Stay locked. Stay loaded. We'll see you again very, very soon. Much love. Much appreciation. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. Do you agree?